Uh, so thank you so much, y'all, for sticking around for the second half of the day. This is going to be super exciting because we are now moving into the AI portion of the day. Uh, to start us off, we're going to start off with a session on coding a drone, which is a really cool use case for AI. So I'm going to bring on Bruno here to join me. I'm super excited for this. I, I love AI. AI is like the hot topic. Uh, and so we're, we're starting off strong with, with making a drone. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Yes. Hey, no pressure. I've seen the <laughs> I've seen the stream so far. So many amazing people, so much knowledge here. And then I came here with my toy with a small drone <laughs> to play around with Azure Open AI and more. But yes, that's kind of the idea. So first of all, thanks. Hey, and this has been amazing. I've been watching this in the second monitor and it's, it's a great day. I'm looking forward <laughs> to share my 20 minutes of AI and a drone. Yeah. I mean, I've had so much fun and I've learned a lot and I'm excited to keep learning. So I will hand it off to you so you can get us started. Perfect. So as I said, hello, everyone. My name is Bruno Capuano. I live in a small city near Toronto. Not in Toronto. You're probably not Canadian. You probably noticed the accent. I was born and raised in Argentina, live in Spain, and moved to Canada several years ago. And hey, I love to tinker around, learn new technologies. I lead a team of advocates focused on programming language. And today I want to talk about drones and OpenAI and Azure OpenAI and how we can use GPT models to generate code to fly the drone. So if we can share my screen, I am going to use two or three slides just to basically set up the contents. This is what we are going to do. We are going to basically connect to the drone. I already showed the drone. It's a small drone. And we are going to write the SDK to do this from scratch. This is the drone that we are using. It's not a professional drone. It's not in the thousand dollars. This is around a hundred dollars. It's literally a toy, so you don't expect much. You can see here in my hand that it's super, super small, 10 minutes battery, but it's good enough to play around. Why? Because even if we don't have an official SDK, there is a document around the cloud that you can find that basically explains how these drones work. So you connect, when we connect to the drone, the drone is going to allow us to connect via Wi-Fi. And by the way, if you use an official app for the drone, you are going to have access to the control of the drone and more. But if you want to write something on your own, you can basically connect to the drone. And then when you are connected to the drone, you can open a couple of UDP ports. UDP, not the best communication protocol. It's if you are used to TCP, UDP, I mean, I have so many jokes about UDP. I'm not going to go to the joke sections. But hey, you open a couple of ports and you have a port to send commands to the drone. You have another port to read information from the drone, like the battery and the altimeter and a couple more. And then you have a third port to access to the camera. So I am going to share the resource at the end. So if you want to dig around this SDK, I'm sorry, this uh, PDF, the drone and more. But once you have this, you're going to start to play around with the drone. And this is my last slide before going to code. But I want to show you this because it's important. This is a toy. So when I connect this from my machine to the drone, uh, right now I'm connecting via wireless, a network cable to the internet, and then I have the. I am going to connect to the drone, but the drone gets disconnected. Usually in the middle of the demo, it stopped working, these kind of things. So that's why I am going to do the fly demos at the end. So this is kind of the idea. This is kind of what we will see today. So stop slides, no more slides. Let's try to write some code. Before going to the code, this is something that we are going to see a lot. This is my <laughs> command window where I have here. Let me minimize this and show you what I have here. I have a ping to the IP of the drone that I already know in T because I want to know when I am connected. And when I turn on the drone, the drone is going to start a hot, a Wi Fi hotspot. I can connect using Windows, but Windows is going to detect that I don't have internet connection with the drone, so it's going to get disconnected. What I do here is basically I do a net sh with a command to connect to the drone. And you can see here that I have the reply that, hey, I am connected here. So I have a reply from the drone. The pin is working. From time to time, I need to go back here to see am I unconnected. Once that is done, let's write some code to connect to the drone. So first. As usual, some imports. What are we going to do here? What are we going to use? Socket, 
Remember, we talked about we need to open a couple of sockets using UDP. Time to do the worst, literally, the worst <laughs> timeout routine ever that you're going to see and threads because we need to, I am going to open the connection to each one of the sockets in different threads so I don't block the main operation, the main application. So once I have that, a couple of lines to basically receive information from the drone. Don't do this at home. I am writing here literally a while through with a try, catch, and try, accept with no condition, no anything, but hey, kind of works for this demo. And I'm going to read from the sockets. I am going to read from the client sockets in chunks of 1,024 bytes. And the state sockets is going to, I'm going to read information in chunks of 256 bytes. And then I'm going to decode these to Axie. And uh, I know the positions here. So in the position 21 of the array, I will have the VATURE information. So very straightforward. This is how I read information for the drone. By the way, I'm going to open the sockets later. Now, how do I send information to the drone? This is the, the one that you need to be careful. I have a send command that is going to basically use a string to send. We have commands in the PDF that are described. You need to take off, land, move forward, move back, flip, and do these kind of things. And I'm going to use, again, the socket. I need to uh, encode the command in UTF-8. And I am going to do kind of a while response to see if I have something for five seconds to control timeout. Again, not the, not the best way to do this, but kind of nice to, to have it here. And it works. It's kind of nice. The other functions are overloads of the original ones, where I basically check if everything is working. I am reading the information from the drone. I am sending information to the drone. Let's move to the threads. So remember my receive data for one socket and my read state for the other socket. I am, that has an eternal loop internal. I am going to open those two functions in a new thread. I don't, we can do this in the same thread and we can do this in the main app, but it's going to basically slow everything. So. I prefer to do it like this, and it's kind of works. And I'm taking a look at the <laughs> at the comments here. If you need, if you have a question, I will try to answer this online. Uh, but hey, I hope it makes sense so far because we are literally at the end of writing, write a very basic SDK to control the drone. So the last one is okay. Let's write an application, and that's it. So I am going to ask for the battery value. Remember. Uh, that at the top, let me scroll here in the top. Here it is. So I have here, I am reading the battery value that I know that in the array of states is the item 21. So I have my battery here and I want to do that. And hey, I am going to send the first command, that the first command to the, to the drone that is need to be the string command. This is part of the PDF. It took me a while to realize that if you are not in developer mode or whatever, you need to send this. And then I have a read comma of a battery to do this. And then I'm going to print the battery. That's basically it. Let's run this one. Let's connect to the drone and run. So I'm still connected. I have here my, my drone application. This is the two files that I have. 5, 10 PM, this is the, the file that I have. So I can do Python, demo.pi, and oh. I'm missing my socket. Oh, I missed something. Hey, this is live demos. This is what we like. So I didn't create the sockets. I miss my sockets. So this is the connection to the drone, which is kind of important. So I know the IP of the drone. By the way, this is live. You can just realize that this is live. I know the IP of the drone. I, need, I know the ports that we have. And I'm going to open the two sockets right now, client and state, to work with this. So now we have it. Let's save it again. Let's go back to, I am still connected. Yes. And let's do CLS, Python demo.pi, and welcome to the most boring demo ever. The battery of the drone is 54%. So uh, I hope it's good enough to, <laughs> to get to the end of the, of the session. Hey, but that's it. That's how we can connect to the drone. Let me do a quick tweak here so you can see that this one. Let me go here to 20 seconds and time sleep. And when I am reading the drone information, I am going to print this list of values. So what I am going to do here is I am reading the drone info, and I am going to print the drone info. So when I do this, there is a lot of info here. 
And if I start to move the, the drone around, I have the drone here, I start to move the drone around, you can see how the info is changing because the drone internally have an accelerator. So the accelerator value is changing. This has the values for the three axes, X, Y, and Z. And we also see, I'm going to finish this right now, but we also see here that we have temperature, low and high in Fahrenheit, time of flight, uh, the, the battery somewhere here in the, in, the, uh, in the back, the vector of accelerometer somewhere here. So there is a lot of info that I can access here from the drone. And remember, it would literally took me five minutes, 10 minutes to write 90 lines of code. And let me go here, it usually, yes, 90 lines of code, and you can access the drone. I'm not going to do anything with the camera. I also have some demos where I access the camera and show the camera, but it's cool to know that if we want to access the camera, we can use OpenCV to access the camera. And the way that basically do this is I use a video capture element in OpenCV. I define that I'm going to access the UDP, IP, and the port 11,111 for this. And then I get frame by frame uh, of the frame by frame of the of the drone camera, and I show this here. And let's do Archer. Let's name a window here, Archer Python Day. And an eternal loop. I have basically action is the frame showing the frame in an open CD window. I do a small resize to have access to to basically make it 600, 640, 480 is kind of small enough and then show the camera. And if I press the letter Q, stop the, the while and working. So if I'm still connected, yeah, I'm still connected, super cool. Let's do Python camera.pi. This is the file that we just created. This is all OpenCV debugging info. And any moment soon, unless I am disconnected, which usually happen at this moment, yes, this, is, this just happened. If we see the ping in the back, it got disconnected. So I need to go here back and stop this one. This is what's happening with live demos. So hey, no problem. Let's try to connect again. In the meantime, I will check the check the comments. Still trying to connect. Working there. When I am connected back, I'm going to launch the camera. Hey, live demos doing the doing the drone. So let me turn on the drone again. Try to connect. Again, sorry for the <laughs> most boring demo ever, which is showing the battery value, but hey, the camera is a little better. One more time, try to connect to the drone. Once I have the IP, should be there. There it is. Let's run the camera there. So, second story of the day will be right now when the Windows camera started. There it is. So here is my drone. You don't sign up here probably to see two Brunos here, but hey, it's kind of nice how in real time I'm accessing the camera. And the response is very good, by the way. There you are. You can wait here or somewhere there. I don't know where, where you are, one, in one of the screens. But it's, it works. It's fine. It's nice. And as I said before, I am not going, oh my god, that angle. I am not going to do fly demos until the end because usually hit my guitars, the Captain American Shield, my crappy cancer uh, sign there. So there is a lot there, but it's super, super easy. A couple of hundreds, not even 200 lines of code. Access the drone, make the drone fly, access the camera, and more. So that's part one. This is what we can do. But how about make the drone fly? Well, how we do this? How we can do this? So basically, I need to, I need to send commands to the drone so I can go here uh, and basically send the command. Command. Uh, hey, Copilot is doing amazing. So take off. So this is going to, yes, we have similar code. So we have take off. If I want to do uh, send command, I don't know. Power 50 is going to move 50. So I can send commands to the drone. And I know the commands. They are parts of the PDF. So I was thinking, hey, what about this? What about using some GPT models, the one that we have in Azure Europe AI, in example, to generate the code, to generate the stuff that we have? So I am going to use 
the text models, I'm not going to use codex, I'm not going to use DALI. Codex may work, but I'm going to use the text models in the, in the chat completion scenario. And basically, the first test that I did, it was in ChatGPT. I went to ChatGPT and I said, hey, act as a programmer. Read the following code. I say, and I show here a couple of sample, samples that, hey, this is how you read the battery, how you move forward, take off, flip, do up, down, and then generate code. And it works, but I want to do the same in Azure. I want to go back here to my Azure portal, to my Azure OpenAI service. I want to use a GPT 3.5, oh, sorry, completions, a GPT 3.5 Turbo. And using this code, I'm going to basically share some reference codes here with a couple of commands. Take off, flip left, move up, move left. I am going to ask the GPT model to generate Python code to take off the drone, move forward, flip right, move down, and land. So once I have this and I do generate, you know the deal. And by the way, here there are a couple of configurations and parameters that I work at the beginning where that I don't know going to, to explain right now, like the temperature or top probability. I think. I have a very decent, very, very decent code. So I ask for take off, and I have here take off. I have to move forward, and I have the move forward. I ask for flip right, and I have the flip right. And by the way, I didn't even share all of the sample activities. I only share the fly, the flip left, I think, or flip forward. I can't remember. But the GPT model, GPT 3.5, it's kind of connect the dots and generate the right code. So at this moment, when I have this, I was started to think, OK, I have this. I have my GPT on Azure. I have my drone ready to fly here. How could, how could I make it work? So I created, again, let's cancel this. Let me delete these lines of code, because I sometimes execute this with the takeoff. It's going to make some, some eh, fun moments. So I have here a super simple application that use internally semantic kernel to basically create a skill to ask the drone to fly. And then I am going to type in the console like a set of actions, and it's going to generate the code. And this is the prompt from the skill, which is no surprise. It's literally the same that I use online. So it's the same that we have here. So let me see here. Oh, perfect. So let me see here. I have the drone, so use this Python code that represents code start, my sample code, code end. And the important line here is generate Python code only to follow these orders. And I have the inputs which are going to be the order. So right now, if I go back here to my file, the mosaic code, oh, sorry, let me open this one and let's copy this file. If I go back to my console, let's minimize this so you have a better light view, minimize some stuff. So let me go to that direction. Uh, and I can do Python 05 demo gen code. This is going to ask me for the actions for the, for the drone. I have a default that is take off the drone, move forward 25 centimeters. Oh, sorry. Take off the drone, move forward 25 centimeters, flip right, move down 30, and land. And this is the code that was generated. Take off, forward, flip right, down, and land. But remember that we talked that we, and I don't want to execute this because I don't have the, this is not the full demo for execute. But remember that, I, that we talk about how UDP is not the best communication protocol. If I run this code like this with the drone, it's going to probably pick up the first command, take off, and then forget about the others because it's going to be like this in a, all one behind the other. So I am going to go to the, the skill here and say, OK, you know what? Have a five seconds delay between commands, because I want to run a command. Then after I run the command, I want to add a delay, and then the other, then the other. And when I have this, if I go, if I go back here and I run my demo again, we are going to see that yes, I am going to use the, the first one, the, the one that I have. Hey, 
GPT is super smart enough to say, okay, I'm going to add a time slip between commands. And that's basically it. So that said, I have everything here to make it fly, to make it run, to see if we are going to use it and really work. So this is the moment that let me set up this one here on the right, minimize this. And I have a camera here that I'm going to pop that is going to show the drone. Let me connect to the drone. This is the moment that it takes some time. And let's have some fun. Let's see if it flies. So it's connecting. I have this camera here. Oh, sorry. I don't want to do this like this. This camera here. I can even open my main camera that you have. Oh, you already seen the main camera. So it's connecting one more time. There it is. I'm connected. So what I am going to do here is I am going to do a Python. This is the temp. And let me put this in the back. And to have more light here, to have a better view, I have a kind of a professional light for, for these kind of things. So there it is. And I hope you see the small drone in the back. You're going to see the drone in two cameras. So once I have this, I am going to it access the battery, action for the drone. I don't want the drone. It's going to use Azure OpenAI to generate the code and execute the code. Yes. So it's kind of flying. Move forward. Don't do a flip. No flips. OK, down. And into it's on land and it's like Okay, you didn't, I hope that you didn't hear, but it hit something landing. All of the pieces are together and everything is connected. So this is kind of, I know it's super fast. Uh, if we have two hours, we can even go deeper in one of the steps, but it works and it's nice and it's literally using. semantic kernel to use Azure OpenAI to generate the code and to run the code. And to run the code, that I, by the way, I use basically save the code in a file, .pi file, and then I use exec of the content of the file. So that's basically it. And I know I went super fast, but let me share with you. This is what we've seen today, super fast. How we can write a SDK of the drone and with the 90, 100 lines, start to interact with the drone access to telemetry, access to the camera, and more. And then, hey, how we can even use Semantic Kernel as a library to create a prompt, to validate a prompt that we have there generating code, and putting everything there all together to, buy, like, to, to make the drone fly. And by the way, everything that we show today is available in, the, in that AKS that basically shows this. I have 20 plus something post about how you can connect to the drone, how you can access the camera, how you can make it fly, how you can do some object detection using OpenCV and other stuff, how you can connect the drone. And the last ones are around Azure OpenAI. So everything is here. And I think that's basically it. I went super fast, but I want to have time. I see a couple of questions here. So any questions that you see? That was fantastic. I was on mute in the background just going yes when it <laughs> when it raised and i can't believe you said it was a boring presentation i was i was the drum roll the whole time and you did live uh, a live coding so just like round of applause there's some people echoing that in the chat as well and we can leave the slide up as we um answer a few questions so people can visit that qr code and those extra links and resources that you provided um let's see do we have any additional questions? Uh, this one's a great one. How many um, how many crashes while testing the code? Hey, I have three drones, so <laughs> that, as a backup plan. So I hope that the number of drones that I have here give you a, give you an idea of how bad this can go. And but I think today is the first time they didn't hit the guitar or something else. 
So it, we got a special uh, presentation then, I guess. That's great. Yeah. And it, those dents in that Captain America armor, those were earned <laughs> by real combat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Awesome. Let's see if we have any more questions in the chat. It was it was a really great presentation. We're just getting a bunch of awesomes in, in the chat as well. Um, so thank you so much for stopping by, sharing all of this knowledge. I'm going to go through and look at your presentations and maybe I can do a little response to all of your blog posts with a blog post of my own of, of following it up. Yes. And <laughs> hey, the only, to leave a note, basically said to everyone, Give it a try. I've been doing the drone, whatever, for a while. And then one day I was running, I think, or walking. I said, hey, I should open it. I may do something here. And it literally works. I kind of start to write a full, make it fly, make it up, make it up, translate, generate the code. It's amazing. Ideas are here too, basically. It's amazing. And it's so cool. easy, which I love it. So cool. You make it look easy. So I'm, I'm definitely going to have to rewatch this presentation. You went fast, but it was really well paced. So uh, another get again, props to you. Um, anyway, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you being here. It was lovely. Perfect. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>